Dear ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. I hope that all of you are doing well. I'm Dominic Platner, the ITDF uh, High Performance Manager, and I'm very happy and proud to warmly welcome all of you to our second lesson of the ITDF uh, High Performance in Development, four classes with Massimo Constantini with the topic Hopes. Before starting with the lesson, I want to talk shortly about our lesson code, about our rules. To all the attendees, please mute yourself and turn off the video. Just Massimo's and my micro will be on. Please don't touch anything regarding the recording or our presentation slides. And please leave your questions in the chat. We will try to answer as many as possible in the questions and answer part of the lesson. Thank you very much. The ITDF High Performance and Development team kicked off the series four classes with Massimo Costantini last week. Besides the lesson of today, two more classes will follow on the coming two Fridays, continuing with the nationals and ending the series with the professionals. The lesson of today, the lesson of today uh, will, um, uh, will uh, cover topics related to the hopes and the content looks like as follows. We will talk about the common elements like goals, planning, training and competition. And on the other hand, the sport elements like strength and conditioning, sport psychology, technique and strategy and tactic. We will share later on this PowerPoint presentation and a second one which contains more details. I wish all of us a very informative and educational lesson. And now the floor is yours, Massimo. Hello, thank you very much, uh, Dominic. Welcome again to all the attendees. And uh, yes, as uh, Dominic said, today we have uh, uh, this second uh, second lesson uh, talking uh, about uh, the hopes. We have a lot of things to to discuss with you, to share with you, actually. And uh, as usual, we will be very happy uh, at, the, at the end to to exchange some uh, some opinions or anyway uh, try to reply to your uh, questions uh, if we have time today is a little bit longer i have to say because as um, dominic said uh, uh, we have uh, many things uh, to to talk so i believe that uh, <clears throat> it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's time for uh, uh, how to say uh, for uh, the de develop the players. So if uh, if last time uh, we we have uh, we have uh, set up uh, how to attract the players uh, when they come to the venue, uh, now now it's time it's time to develop their uh, their skills. And uh, uh, with this, we try to to give you some information uh, regarding the, the key factors uh, for uh, for their uh, um, development. So um, normally I, I like to use a very simple, you know, uh, words to remember to remember what to do. So I have uh, indicated this basic scheme with the, the three uh, W's and one uh, one H. So basically is what is why, uh, when, and uh, and how. So when uh, when uh, I do the work normally I I like to have uh, let's say this is small guidance and. To do this, uh, basically, we have uh, four elements to make ourselves uh, as a coach and players uh, becoming becoming responsible. So uh, the the four elements are the goals, planning, training, and uh, competition. So uh, when we have the when we have the goals, I think uh, we have to answer the question: uh, uh, What? So it's time to set up the goals. The kids are 12 years old, 13 years old. Uh, we have to set up goals. So achievable goals, uh, important technical fitness, personal training goals when they train to, to, to challenge themselves, uh, explore new skills, and of course, the competition goals, uh, either is regional, national, international, and based on results, of course, and uh, and the ranking, which is also is also important, is also time for planning. So uh, the planning is the part uh, that uh, it answers to the question why. Here I've listed, as usual, you know, like last time, a few a few things. 
uh, but uh, feel free to fill up with other with other elements that you you maybe in your experience you uh, you have uh, you have in mind. So of course the planning uh, because uh, each goal uh, requires a plan um, is essential is instrumental nece necessary setting the schedule uh, gives consistency to your work. We will see uh, in future maybe yes next week. Uh, how can we create a good uh, um, a good schedule for uh, for uh, for those players? Now we are in this phase where we have to develop them, teach them, educate them to many many things. So uh, besides the the planning, of course we have uh, we have uh, the the training, and it's time to improve. So we have uh, we have these kids. Uh, uh, playing, doing stuff, uh, uh, working on footwork, of course. Uh, now we have to train. To train means to do it better, consistently, uh, try and check, uh, uh, think big, uh, because when you are there, you have to start, uh, you know, thinking your uh, your uh, idols uh, to aim to uh, at some uh, uh, some important uh, achievement. Uh, then of course, uh, training means also hard work, uh, remain humble, and then and the, the last uh, is to, uh, <coughs> to dream. So um, it is important that the, the training uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, is there and uh, continue to give the proper education to these kids because uh, uh, they have to understand what is super important for them having a consistent training. So, I have prepared a couple of slides regarding the, the training. One uh, is uh, uh, we call analytics method. And um, uh, you know very well that uh, we, we have drills, so we can create many drills. On the analytics methods, we have uh, one side learning and one side uh, uh, repetition. So maybe more uh, prearranged drills uh, are, are, are very important for them. To, uh, to create that part of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, yes, confidence, because there is consistency, uh, to create uh, a proper power in their, in their legs when you do footwork. Uh, many things are around because uh, repetition is uh, it's very important. Then, of course, uh, you, can, uh, you can set up some contextual drills. So uh, you can set up a simple scenario and, uh, and work on that scenario it can be, I don't know, just uh, the third ball or the fifth ball or the recovery ball, uh, stepping around and so on. So there are many. Of course, as usual, we have to give time to process. We have to give time to them to, you know, to, uh, to, to, to process the, 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 the work and understand the validity of the work, of course. So, um, Besides the, the, the analytics methods, we have the combined method. So it's a mix. It's a mix where you have to have from one side the mindset and the other side to find the, the fine tune. Now it's, it's coming a little more detailed, you know. So we can have definitely the prearranged drills, but my advice, like many coaches also in advanced coaching and training, uh, you can create a game-like situation where, uh, where uh, starting from simple drills can end up in a, in a, in a free rally, for example, uh, or maybe more contextual. So create uh, active or passive uh, or a mixed scenario for the players where they have to deal and they have to learn uh, different things. And uh, of course, when you have this combined method that comes up to the to the to the free rally, uh, we want them to win the point. We want them to create that uh, winning mentality that is uh, necessary for them to uh, to uh, compete uh, to compete later on. And again, so we need for this also time to process everything. It's it's is always keep in mind that nothing coming overnight. And, uh, and then it's time also to compete. So the competition is uh, the, the fourth element. Uh, well, I, I give this definition <laughs> from my side. I said that the activity or condition to confront one's ability with those of others. So 
um, I don't like the idea, you know, to 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 uh, to be a superior or uh, or having the supremacy or uh, dominate, prevail. Uh, yes, at the end, the results is like that. I win, you lose. But uh, at the at the very end is a confrontation of my ability, my ability to manage the match, to elaborate strategy. I, I put uh, hand on the pressure. Many players, uh, young kids, uh, they get nervous at the very end. They don't know how to handle. So this time is good. The competition is good to uh, help them how to how to uh, how to handle the interaction with the coach. Super important now because. You will have it later on when the kids, uh, you know, uh, becoming um, uh, teenager or adults, uh, national, international, whatever. And uh, and of course, uh, again, uh, uh, you know, um, to to dream uh, to dream uh, your uh, your uh, your future. Um, so uh, when we we have the the, the competition, of course. Uh, uh, there is a part of analysis. I just want to to really to give you a little taste because we have in the future many other opportunities to discuss about that. And uh, the analysis, of course, uh, is related to the to the players' feedback. Number one, uh, it is good also that the players take the you know the habit to write down a few notes. Uh, uh, what I did, what my opponents did, uh, what was my feeling, uh, everything for a coach is super important, you know, to understand. So each match uh, is very advisable to have this short uh, um, confrontation with the, with the player and get their feedback. Recording the match, nowadays, uh, even, uh, yeah, um, hopes, <laughs> we call hopes, they, they record the match because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, it's important to review. Maybe you enjoy watching. You don't enjoy watching, but recording the match is a, is a, is another part uh, that they should keep. And the, at the end, the takeaway. So what to remember from that experience is uh, is something that I have to repeat. Something that I have to adjust. Uh, something that I have to avoid because I did something wrong or I didn't like it. And also the coach told me, "Yeah, it's not that good. What you did, you should have attacked." Instead, you pushed and so on. So many things are there. And then the takeaway means uh, to remember. For what? To get ready next time. So again, we need the time to process and uh, and then to, to get time. So um, to get ready for next time. So um, before uh, leaving the, 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 um, the, the floor to Dominic today, Dominic also will help me and I'm very happy that uh, is here with me uh, just to introduce the, the sport elements uh, as uh, said before so we have the four pillars uh, we don't I don't want to call now the performance eventually it will be the performance but uh, now we are still in uh, in development uh, uh, let's say stage so fitness how important is fitness is Super important technique, of course, sport psychology and uh, strategy and tactic. So uh, for the moment, I stop here and um, Dominic, uh, you can uh, you can take over and uh, and uh, enjoy. Thank you very much, Massimo, for giving us a great overview about the common elements. As Massimo said, now it's time uh, to speak about the sport elements. Uh, about the four pillars you can see on the slide and actually all of them are uh, really very important and they have to be covered if you want uh, to, to bring up a successful athlete. Um, I would like to start uh, with the fitness, uh, as, especially uh, in, in the age uh, of the hopes it is a good timing to build up a solid base. Uh, actually it is a must do, uh, but how to do it? First of all, we, when we are talking about fitness, we, we have to follow a hierarchical order of the planning of a practice. The, the practice should start with the coordination part, then followed by the speed, strength, anaerobic endurance, and last but not least, the aerobic endurance. So going over to the next slide, um, we will touch uh, the following topics uh, today regarding fitness, methods for hopes, physical capacities, the warm-up, the cool-down, 
and the testing. When talking about uh, the methods uh, for the hopes, uh, then uh, it is very important as for any athlete, uh, but especially for the younger ones, uh, that uh, you, you have to be aware of who you have in front of you. So uh, check the athletes first. You have to think about the health issues of them. Then think about the body composition, about the abilities. One guy is a little faster, the other slower, more powerful, whatever. And then, of course, the background. Did, does the guy come from sport? Is the guy talented in a kind of sport, in a special kind of sport? And then it's about to set priorities related to the age and to the gender. And of course, to the needs in table tennis. And one of the most important things is to make the practice attractive by giving them challenges. So going over to the uh, physical capacities and uh, you can see on the slide use them or lose them. I, I like this quote uh, very much because everything is said with this five word. If you want to keep the level of your physical capacities then you have to work on them continuously. Let's start with the aerobic endurance. Uh, it's the base for all our activities and the ability to continuously transport oxygen to our organs and working muscles and also to use it in metabolic processes to efficiently perform work. Due to the reason that the interval of lactate concentration during a table tennis match uh, fluctuates between zero and two millimol, we can easily see that uh, the aerobic endurance is from the highest importance. Going over to the next point, the anaerobic endurance. It is the ability of the organism to use glycogen in aerobic in anaerobic lactate metabolism and to tolerate biochemical situations that arise as a result. But if you are, we are when we are talking about the endurance activities, the most important thing with the especially with the hopes is to engage the players, make the endurance practice, I would say, interesting for them. For sure, if we I give you an example, uh, they will have much more fun when playing soccer or other team sports than doing or going for a continuous run. Especially when working with the hopes, it is very much about the fun engagement. And going over to the next points, the strength and power, speed co and coordination and agility and flexibility. And those um, capacities I would like to address later on a little bit more in details. Last but not least, we have the balance and uh, the balance um, is, the, uh, is the capacity or I would say it's an even, even distribution of weight enabling someone or something to remain upright in a steady position. This is also a very uh, important um, capacity in table tennis, but as said before, we have to bear in mind that each of the abilities has its best increase of development in a specific age, so in a sensitive phase. I have mentioned that I will talk about the following capacities which are part of the sensitive phases regarding the hopes age more in detail. But keep in mind, the other one shouldn't be neglected. Let's start with the strength and power. Uh, first of all, a strength is the capacity to perform muscular uh, work of sub maximal and intermediate intensity for a longer time. It can be dynamic or static or the on the other hand, you have the power, it's the capacity to produce maximal strength as quickly as possible. When thinking in particular about table tennis, then the explosive power is the most important type of power. Uh, thinking about the one very important aspect, it's the uh, strength and power development in childhood. To, uh, to the reason that many myths exist and unfortunately sometimes mistakes uh, occur, especially with the strength and power training within this age, we have to say that of course it's very effective, but it has to be adapted to each individual child. You as a coach must set priorities. Think about, and it's a must do about the technique, it has to be perfectly performed. And uh, the, the athlete has to be taught from the beginning on to perform with the right technique. Over to the speed. 
the speed, as all of us know, it's as table tennis is known as uh, maybe the fastest uh, ball sport game in the world. Uh, it plays a crucial role in, in table tennis. It should be practiced at the beginning of the session and in a recovered state. This is one of the most important things. But what is speed? It's the ability to react to different stimuli within the shortest possible time and to perform an action with maximum velocity. And regarding uh, the hopes and uh, the speed development uh, at, the, at the hope ages, um, it's about a center practice of speed. Then you should not go uh, too early uh, for the speed endurance exercises. And as in many other things, the coordinative approach plays an essential role. If the hopes body get early enough uh, confronted with the speed exercises, then a solid base can be built up on which the athlete can refer later on. Over to one of the, or maybe the most uh, important ability in table tennis, as we are a very complex sport, it's the coordination. And it's the ability of the organism to execute complex motor skills efficiently. But nevertheless, of course, beside the sport, it's also about uh, having a good coordination in general and everyday life. It can be, of course, from, from biggest advantage. But there are limiting factors. It's the energy, the time, and the space. And here on the on the bottom of the of the slide, we can see the necessity of uh, the development in the early childhood. So there are the biophysiological uh, aspects, because uh, as mentioned before, uh, in the sensitive phases, coordination is especially built up in these kind of ages. And then we have on the other side the behavioral aspects is about the importance of, of learning new motor skills. So the body should uh, be, you know, taught uh, early enough, uh, different uh, and should should be, you know, uh, practiced to, to adapt to different kind of situations and, and uh, using um, all the motor skills. Then uh, the second point is the av availability of time. Normally later on, never again, you will have the same time as in your, as in your childhood to, to work on the coordination. And of course the interest. Many of the of the children are very interested if you are talking about uh, coordination, doing with them special exercises. And I would like to uh, to mention something that you should keep in mind. Uh, many many times uh, agility uh, gets um, used as a single single term or gets separated from the coordination, but actually it's one type of coordination. Then over to the flexibility training. Uh, bear in mind to, to do the uh, flexibility training um, uh, related and uh, yeah, thinking about the age age of the, of the child. Yeah? So the flexibility training uh, can be done in many ways and there are numerous numbers of, of possibilities. But the, I want to, to show you the, the three most important and maybe also most common, common uh, techniques. It's the static one. All of us are for sure know about the static stretching. It's the most popular one. It's to reach a certain level of amplitude and to keep it throughout a minimum of 30 seconds in most of the cases. I will tell you later on why I say now most of the cases. And then we are having also on the other side the dynamic stretching. This is about uh, the full range of motion. It's um, an improvement of the intra and intramuscular coordination, which we will address in the next lesson of the nationals. And then last but not least, we have the proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. First of all, the muscle gets stretched. Then the stretched muscle gets fully contracted and then the contracted muscles get relaxed and stretched again. Going over to the start of the practice. So when I'm talking about the warm-up, I would like uh, to show you the significance. So please take your time with the warm-up. Do it in the right and proper way. Nurture your athletes in a way that they get used to uh, a particular warm-up routine. Uh, the warm-up has to, to be done with a high quality, especially when working with the young athletes. Hopes, however you want to call them. It's from the utmost importance to have a look at their technique and to, uh, if needed, to, to do a prompt uh, correction. So um, the warm-up can be done in the following way. Um, you should start uh, before the running ABC with the stretching and mobility part. But now I'm coming back to the stretching. Before the practice, you should just stretch your muscle for a short time, maximum up to eight or 10 seconds. 
Then go over to the mobility exercises, which are very important to also get the full range of motion and make your joints and ligaments ready. And then go over to the running ABC. Of course, starting with uh, normal running, you know, and then doing exercises, side steps, uh, step over, cross steps, whatever, whatever. And then the third part is a very additional part, uh, individual part. It depends also on the phase you are in, on the goals you have, but you can use the coordination ladder. As mentioned before, coordination is one of the most important things. You can go for ropes keeping. Ropes keeping is one of the king disciplines, I would say, for, for table tennis to do during a fitness training. And or you go for even a shadow practice to maybe, you know, already practice the table tennis movement. And they are also like skipping or whatever on the stand uh, activation exercises. So when having done the, the, the main part of the practice, then it's time for the cool down and bear in mind. Cool down is part of the full training process. So a uh, Training without a cool down is not a fully completed training. You can start uh, or should start with a, with a sh short jogging, you know, at a slow pace. Throughout the jogging, the lactate uh, gets quickly uh, eliminated, but in general, the recovery gets sped up. So it's a very positive e effect. And then on, on the other hand, you can go for the individual second part could be, you know, to, to elevate the legs, so the legs up uh, and the lactate and gets then uh, transported much uh, faster back, you know. It's a very good exercise, which can be also combined with stretching when uh, stretching the adductors when with spreading the legs. So the one important thing is that the gluteus muscle has to touch the wall, then you can gain the highest effectiveness within this exercise. And in general, I know, of course, the hopes they don't uh, produce that amount of lactate in the test, but nevertheless, they have to get taught to use these kind of techniques, make them aware of their body and the function, and it will be a big advantage for them when they are getting older. Then they will have an independent thinking. And beside the legs up, you can also do uh, the stretching, but this time for a longer time. But again, depending on the goal, you know, the duration is depending on the goal. So if you are having in the afternoon a second practice, then it's no need to stretch the muscle that long. But in the evening, on be uh, past the, the last practice, you should do it for a while, up to one minute. You know, it's also possible, but do it properly and think about what you choose. And then, of course, the mobility. Also, you know, after the training, it's a very good, good thing to mobilize your ligaments, muscles, whatever. And last but not least, uh, when thinking about the fitness, there is also, of course, a big need for, uh, you know, fitness testing. So we've prepared for you a working chart, you can see. And the goal is to do a regular and proper testing, but not don't exaggerate it. So um, when thinking about the aerobic endurance, we can do, for example, the Cooper test. The point is to run as far as possible within the 12 minutes. And uh, keep in mind that the pacing is very important. Then going over to the anaerobic endurance, it can be the Conconi test. It is used to measure an athlete's heart rate at different loads. When thinking about the strength, uh, you can go for the pull-up or sit-up test. So, for example, doing one minute a sit-up, doing one minute sit-ups, and and uh, checking how many they are able to do. And then when thinking about the power and the explosive strength, which is very important in table tennis, go for the sit and uh, jump and reach or vertical jump test. And when thinking about, about the speed, uh, you can do 20 meter sprints, 30 meter sprints, whatever. There are so many possibilities. Thinking about the flexibility, it's the sit and reach test, a flexibility test uh, that is especially in, uh, made for the lower back and hamstring muscles. And uh, over to the balance, you, you can do a balance uh, board test. You know, it, it, it is a wooden balance platform, uh, white beam running lengthwise uh, down uh, the middle beneath it. And the small steppers are placed on the edges, on the corners of the platform. So the board cannot be tilted more than 80 degrees. And the goal is to don't touch the floor and then measure within 30 seconds or one minute how many times they touch the floor. Over to the agility, the very well-known T-test. You just need four cones and, uh, you know, around uh, you, you place the co cone A, then uh, on the opposite side, uh, nine, around nine meters away, the cone B, and then both sidewards 
the cone C and D, and both of them are four and a half meters away. And then uh, the, the athlete has to run from A to B and so on, and then going back to A in the end. And last but not least, as I mentioned before, maybe the supreme test, the skipping rope test, one minute of doing a skipping rope. So thank you very much. That's all from the fitness side. And again, back to you, Massimo, for the next part. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Professor Dominic Platner. It's uh, absolutely, absolutely great. And uh, I know, guys, this is necessary to to learn to understand because the, this is a part that uh, it's it comes with you all the time. You do this job, you know. You 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 are you are a coach. Uh, you are taking care of the kids, uh, a group of players, uh, a club, uh, or whatever, a national team, and. Uh, uh, this is uh, this is a part that uh, you 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 got to know. You got to know like the the, the quality skills of the player. So, I uh, when I I prepare this class, I I wanted to to put all, all the four elements uh, that in future will be definitely the 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 elements of the performance because. As I said, I repeat, and I said many times, uh, this is a time to educate them. So uh, what they are doing now, then they learn now, and then they will continue to do in uh, in future, and uh, and and so on. So you give the proper uh, habit to the to the your uh, your students, your players, uh, and uh, you will have a very very good advantage on this. Um, yeah, the other week, if you remember, we were uh, talking about, uh, you know, uh, to, to repeat, investigate and observe uh, your students. So uh, now in this phase uh, uh, with fitness, of course, uh, technically uh, sport psychology and uh, tactics, now we have to pick uh, some the, the best, uh, <clears throat> the best skills that they have, the, the, the kids. And then we have to try to make uh, the, to make uh, the best uh, uh, the best use uh, the best use of the um, of those skills can be speed can be uh, yes coordination agility and try to uh, make better where they are not uh, you know doing quite well but also try to to make even perfect those uh, um, uh, they are doing quite well. So uh, never stop to uh, think how to improve yourself and uh, and your, uh, your your kids. So uh, again, the other week we discussed about discipline. This time, uh, of course, uh, we have the, the same. I have changed a little bit because now they have to learn how to compete. And uh, uh, if the other time we have said that the process uh, uh, is expressed in different ways, ways depending you know family social uh, background and but now in competition scenario it's 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 actually is the same we have the same table the other side there is a, a, a player with two legs uh, one uh, one uh, one arm one racket back and forth and so we are really really in the same uh, in the same conditions and so we have uh, other things to to be uh, disciplined uh, in, like uh, preparing yourself, how to prepare. Uh, again, don't forget to do to teach something now to make it, uh, you know, uh, as a as a consolidate and habit later on. So prepare yourself, of course, obey the rules, respect yourself, respect your opponent, uh, respect the official, the equipment. We said the other time, you know, the kids, they don't know. Maybe they hit the racket on the table or they, they throw the racket. OK, now it's time to learn how to compete. Well, this one is also valid when they do training, eh? because also during the training, the, the players get uh, sometimes uh, too nervous and then they have to control themselves. Last but not least is the learn to win and to lose. If you remember when I said before the 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 analysis uh, it was exactly because of this you know so you have to understand what happened during the the the, the competition and the learning to win is uh, is an ability learning to lose is another abilities 
So to avoid that the players uh, get uh, some excuses, uh, ah, this was an edge, was a net, uh, uh, was this and was that, uh, nothing. We have also to sometimes, not sometimes, uh, uh, most of the times to recognize that our opponents did better than us. That's it. So, and recognizing this, it's, uh, it's uh, strengthening the player. It's, uh, it's uh, giving uh, fortitude. Because uh, you, you, you give also the, the, the uh, honor to the opponents. So it's important to learn how to win and uh, uh, how to lose. Now we go for the technique elements, like we have, uh, we have said before. I have, uh, I have listed uh, some of the elements because uh, this is a journey, let's say. And the journey uh, requires uh, um, a sort of... Uh, uh, steps, uh, stages. Uh, uh, so the pathway, we know very well what we have to do from a kid coming in the first time in the venue and uh, when uh, uh, becomes uh, professional. So I, I, I indicated a few, a few things uh, important from my point of view, timing serve, using the body, ball and racket, flick, spin in general, and the counter spin. So I, I have, um, how to say, uh, I want to give a few explanations regarding this, this area because uh, uh, if it's a journey uh, for, for, for us, it's also a journey for the player where they have to, to, to go from one place to another place. So timing, I think table tennis is the, is the, is the king of a rhythm. So it, it is all about timing. I mean, our life is timing. Is uh, it's running around the clock actually, and walking, running, doing everything. So table tennis is uh, no uh, exception. Why? Because every move a player makes, uh, they make with the rhythm, right? So they have to follow the ball. They have to coordinate. Dominic uh, was telling before. They have to be fast enough. Uh, they have to be. Uh, consistent, uh, they have to have uh, endurance to do things uh, and uh, and so on. So uh, to me, it's the timing is one, one is one is one of the talent market. So when I see a player at that age, maybe a little before, but also in that age that. Uh, so harmoniously is able to move his body, uh, reaching the ball, uh, um, uh, having a good coordination, uh, hitting gently the ball, moving gently also the body, and uh, keeping the the the, um, uh, the this kind of lightness. Uh, I think you have uh, a good talent uh, in the in the in the venue. So, um, well, after the timing, uh, I indicated the serve, of course, uh, is the start, is something that uh, from, uh, from nothing to something. Uh, recently, I also I have posted uh, um, an article on the ITTF uh, uh, regarding the serve and all the interaction. So if you wish to uh, check that article, so here I try to make a quick resume of that. Uh, important that age uh, to explore uh, what uh, what kind of serve it for and it is true that uh, some of the kids they already fix uh, some sort of a mechanism uh, but uh, again the, the, the try to to uh, uh, give uh, the proper curiosity you know maybe watching another player see that player with the back and serve and then he was able to attack or the forehand or the tomahawk so uh, try to you know to uh, to do as many as possible and and try to observe again and again uh, what is the the best for them what is the best solution many times the kids they do serve and then maybe they get surprised themselves. Maybe doing another serve, ah, they are more comfortable. So again, feedback, observation, and then try to work at the table what is what is better. And uh, uh, the last, of course, uh, do it fairly because uh, cheating never elevates your level. So um, remember that the serve has to be uh, performed correctly and uh, as, per the, as per the rules. 
I I also put the using the body because using the body in the techniques uh, it, it's uh, maybe we think that uh, table tennis many of you maybe uh, thinking that table tennis is a racket is the is the is the arm is uh, is some part of the body from my point of view the body is super involved completely um, I'm not talking now for uh, the, the right arm or the free arm, how the free arm is involved in, uh, in executing and performing uh, strokes, uh, but uh, I want to use my body to, to do something, to do something even new, you know, move your boundaries, I, I, I put, uh, because the body is, the, is, the, is, your, uh, is your tool. And, uh, and then you can fix and expand your skills. You can fix better the balance. Before Dominic was was talking about the the balance, you remember. And this is this is uh, crucial because if the body is not moving properly after uh, hitting the ball, so it's not only a matter of strokes. Uh, it's a matter of, of of body that the body moves, recover, get ready for next. And this is a continuous process, never, never stop. Back to the timing you remember. So um, next, uh, yes, uh, uh, if we have the body, uh, then the ball and the racket are our, uh, I said, uh, <laughs> weapon, you know. It's a sort of uh, your personal uh, arsenal, let's say. So. Uh, what we can do with them. So we, we, we can do many, many things. We can explore, we can understand uh, better our skill. Uh, you remember last time we were talking about the grip, how, how much pressure you could, uh, you could give to the, to the grip, and then having the passion for, uh, for these two elements is, uh, is, is everything, because you can learn new things. You can make uh, the, the things that you already know even better. You can surprise the opponent. You can surprise yourself. Uh, the, the ball is magic. And this, trust me, in this case, the ball is magic and you can make it magic, actually. <laughs> so uh, uh, with, the, with the racket, you can make the ball magic. And we will see later on, uh, later on uh, uh, why. Uh, flick. Okay. Uh, we, like me, uh, I'm quite old, uh, but mentally very young, I have to say. Um, I, I grew up with the, with the, with the, with the, with the push, with the idea that uh, I have to push, I have to return the, the, the ball, maybe play one, two, three, four, five times push before something, something happened. But uh, since uh, several years back, uh, the, the flick is coming as a, as a, a must know in the techniques of the uh, of the of the kids so i i think that is a part that we have to we have to teach uh, to teach them very well uh, it can give so many solution uh, from the tactical point of view of course uh, is the way to you know to let's say to take initiative of course uh, to, to set up our game, to show to the opponent, say, look, I'm ready that I can, uh, you can do whatever the serves you, you, you wish, but I'm ready with the flick. I'm ready to, to attack. So the flick nowadays is, uh, is, is really, really uh, important uh, to, you know, to make a player complete. I'm not saying that they have to flick anyway, because push is also... Uh, 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 important as the flick, but uh, it's something that they they should know. Um, I, let me add one more thing because maybe uh, recently so many players uh, are able to 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 perform the flick with backhand, forgetting the foreign. Now a little uh, shy, uh, some players try also to play uh, foreign flick. Uh, uh, why don't we study a little bit better this foreign flick? Why don't we we try, you know, uh, not to move too early all the way to the right, uh, to the center of the table to flick uh, and try to, to explore better with the foreign? I think we need uh, to make a, a, a sort of reflection what to do with this foreign, because otherwise uh, it's too limited what we can do. And we don't want limitation in our, in our game. The spin, the spin, 
I don't know if you like it, I, I call the soul of the table tennis. So the soul of the table tennis means that uh, the spin is our soul. And uh, uh, I start from, uh, from, uh, from the side spin uh, with the question, uh, do we agree that the ball is spherical? I think so, right? So so it means that uh, we can generate the spins anywhere with foreign, with back, and the up, down, side, uh, uh, maybe uh, not super side in the middle way. And each action, each action creates uh, actually a, a, a response from the ball. So, of course, a top spin is a must. They know from the beginning, as you said the other week, that the players tend, because they are short, tend to go up with the action. And going up means that uh, it is intrinsic that they are they are doing a top spin motion. There is no rotation, but they do a top spin motion. So uh, by the time they can make it uh, make it better and better, as well the back spin, the exactly the opposite. Maybe maybe players enjoy a lot to do this because uh, it gives a sort of a power, the sort of a control of the ball. You know, when they, they, they do a very heavy backspin and the, and the ball comes back <laughs> to your side, it's so magical, you know, that uh, it makes the, the player uh, skillful. I, oh, why? I can do this. Or maybe curve, going from one side and turn to the right, left, and so on. So really, really, this is a part that uh, can uh, can uh, can give to the, to the player, can discover, let's say, uh, uh, many, many more abilities. I, I don't want to put here limitation on this. So try, make it better, more spin, less spin. We will see next week uh, how to manage uh, the, 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 the quantity uh, of the spin according to the, to the, to the player. Uh, the last uh, is the counter spin. Okay, this is, I want to just take a couple of minutes because uh, it is the most attractive. So uh, kids love to go far away immediately. After the first uh, shot, they go two, three meters, and then they start hitting the ball, bam, 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 from, uh, from far away, and uh, they are happy. I understand there is a sort of inside uh, uh, satisfaction, let's say, you know, so they, they enjoy to do that. But from my point of view, this can lead to a, a bad habit the bad habit or the wrong habit, so to uh, become uh, too much uh, defensive. So I said in the second point, uh, uh, the risk is uh, that uh, because uh, I don't know what is the mechanism behind, okay, later on Dominic will talk about uh, the, the sports psychology again next week, we have to in investigate more uh, deeper, and uh, uh, this can lead to be defensive. Even you have a good opportunity to lead the rally, to attack, uh, to continue, but then because of this, you become defensive. You go back and trust me, many players, they don't, they don't have mercy. They just, <laughs> they just take over and then counter attack and then you are there try to fishing or, uh, or lobbing. We will see later on in the tactical uh, tactical uh, um, chapter, let's say like that. So I stop here. I think uh, Dominic is uh, is back to you, back to you again with the uh, with the sport uh, psychology and uh, talk to you later. Thank you very much, Massimo. And yes, we are uh, at the at the chapter sports psychology. And uh, first of all, uh, we are all aware of this, that it's from the utmost importance to, to work uh, in this field, you know, and there are very, very much benefits, you know, but uh, you have to bear in mind, it is very difficult to measure the result in sports psychology, and therefore it's very much about the subjective level. So let's have a, a deeper look, you know, on the different fields of the sports psychology. First of all, we have the performance development. All of us want that the athlete performs well, of course, but it's not all about the performance. The second point is the personality development. It's very interesting uh, how, how the character of a player can change in some situations. Some of the players, they are really calm when they are off the table. 
but when they enter the field, they get like a beast, I would call it, you know. They show the opponent that they, they want to win at any cost, you know. But uh, don't forget, sport is also about um, education for the life. Just think about the, the respect, uh, the, I would say, you know, the respect you, you, should, you should have uh, regarding your opponent, you know, or the fair play or the learning how to win and how it feels when you are losing, you know. And last but not least, the third point is the mental health. This is maybe the most important point when thinking about the, the general life. It is from, from the highest importance to be mentally fit. If you aren't mentally fit, then you won't be able to perform on, a, on, a, on, your, on your highest level, on your usual level, you, I have to say. Not, not, not even the highest level. It's almost impossible to perform on the usual level. And therefore, the goal of the coach has to nurture the player with a discipline uh, which fits to the to the high performance sport, you know. But at the same time, it's about uh, you know it has to be human, you know. So uh, let's uh, have a closer look uh, and focus on the hopes, uh, the so-called uh, the young uh, the young talented players. What do they have to deal with, you know, when we are thinking about uh, the first of all, the physical demands. So many of the hopes of the really talented players, they are already with young ages in, in training centers, many time on training camps. So the physical demands are very high. They are around practicing around four to five hours a day table tennis beside that doing other stuff, you know, so it's really physically very demanding. Then the second point, the psychological demands. So, of course, they have to deal already with a lot of pressure, co cope with different scenarios, you know, for sure not that easy for them because all is new for them. So, so they have to be well prepared. And the third point are the social demands when thinking about and also having mentioned, you know, the that they are not living anymore home with the parents in, in many cases. It's very much about the distance to the parents, about the distance to the old friends, friends at home, which also uh, doesn't make it, uh, you know, like easier for them in some cases for sure. But also, you know, um, also in general, the social social contact, because uh, when they are practicing all day, normally they just see, see their table tennis friends, I can say. And uh, so this uh, advice is coming really from my heart. Um, you should start as early as possible with the with the mental training. Otherwise, all these factors which I uh, mentioned can lead to a sport point out, you know, etc. Other things, you know. Um, but how to avoid all uh, those situations? It's done throughout the help of the sports psychology. Um, and therefore, you have uh, or you should work with a sport psychologist and this sport psychologist will uh, create individual strategies and techniques uh, and they will be part of the athlete's toolbox, as it is called. Uh, and then you can get the most out of in this individuality. So uh, there are different kind of, um, of, of exercises, methods, whatever. I just uh, listed here on this slide four of them. It's about uh, the breathing exercises. Start with them uh, to do the, I would say, quite simple abdominal breathing. Take, uh, take your time, choose a, a calm place, let them lay down and then do it for around five minutes. Just that they control their breath, you know, and then later on after five minutes, they will see that they found their inner middle, I call it, you know. Then over to the visualization or also called imagery. This is one of the most important uh, abilities for a sport athlete. And there we have the pet lab model, it's called. The P stands for physical. So you should imagine the relevant physical uh, characteristics. The E stands for the environment. Uh, imagine the environment where you perform. So it can be a stadium or it can be a small hall when they are playing league matches, whatever. Then the T stands for the task. Imagine the, the details of the relevant tasks. The second T is the timing. It can be in real time or in the slow motion. So the, the, the slow motion is to, of course, to emphasize technical aspects and the real time can be especially for the emotion. Then the next is the L stands for learning. Continue, adapt and review to match tasks and uh, demand on your experience level. This is very important. Then the, the E stands for the emotion, as mentioned before, to feel the situation. 
and the P stands for the perspective. You can have the first person perspective or the third person's perspective. First person is more for the focus on the timing and the opening skills, and the third is more about the form and the positioning of the athlete. Then over to the NG team management, which we will address in the in one of our next two lessons. And the last one is the self talk. I would talk. I would like to talk with you about. And uh, there are different kind of self talks. But when we are thinking about the positive one, I can only give you that advice as a coach: choose properly and carefully signal words that will then you know uh, make your athlete's mind react very quickly on them. So it could be fast that the active that the athlete knows. Okay, he is now a little bit uh, no, not enough activated. You know, he has to push himself a little bit more. He has to play faster, you know. And uh, the next point, which is one of the most important points in sport mechanology, is about the winning mentality. Uh, it's about being ready and well prepared because all of the athletes, they are, you know, competing on a high level already when they are young, you know, doesn't matter the age, you know. So, uh, and all of us have also, of course, to fight with not so pleasant situations. You have to have to be well prepared. So, uh, how, but how does the mind of a winner look like? It's about the motivation. Uh, we put it on the top because, of course, this is the most important thing. The athlete has to be motivated. Yeah. Then the second point is the discipline. When thinking about the discipline, as uh, Max mentioned before, it's one of the most important things in our sport life. You have to be disciplined. Doesn't matter, on or off the table. Then the next point is the goal setting. You have to have clear goals. The confidence, as you can see on the left side, this is one of the key factors for to become a successful athlete. Then the routines, anxiety management again, of course, they are very, very uh, well managing this. And then, of course, all of them are using uh, psychological techniques, the so-called toolbox, I would call it, is quite big. Going over to the next slide, speaking about the goals, as I've mentioned before, it's very crucial and uh, important to, to have and set uh, goals. But it's also, uh, you know, um, important to set sub goals in a clear and proper way. And this can be done. And I would like to, to introduce you to the smarter method. And this helps you to define the sub goals in a much easier and clearer way. It has to be specific, meaningful, agreed, relevant, time specific, engaging and recorded. And I like this quote very much on the left side. Antoine de Saint-Exupéry said, a goal without a plan is just a wish. And in my opinion, he's totally right with this quote. And last but not least, I would like to talk with you today about the routines. And uh, they can be very useful, I have to say, to, to keep the focus high, to calm down and, and to stay in, in the athlete's own rhythm. And uh, there are three types of routines. Can be the pre-game routines, which can be, for example, listening to music, doing a specific warm up, searching for a calm place in the hall, whatever. Then the in-game routines, it's maybe as you saw or for sure you've, you've seen that so far that some of the players, they are folding their towels or they are, you know, running big rounds uh, on the field. So this is all about their routines, you know, or maybe taking a deep breath, bouncing the ball before the surf. And last but not least, we have the post-game routines. It can be a immediate um, analysis with the coach or it can be whatever, like uh, also again, listening to calming down music. Many, many things are there, you know, uh, cooling down routines, special routines and so on. But um, as all of us are also aware about this, it's uh, sometimes those routines, they, they may be funny and look funny for other people around, around the athlete. But the athlete shouldn't put a uh, great store by their reactions and think about their self because um, if you want to become a successful athlete, you have to have your routines. And um, as mentioned before also, it's about to start in general as early as possible with the players or the athletes uh, with, with the mental preparation, the sport psychology part. So thank you very much. And this is now all from my side. Uh, 
regarding the sports psychology part. And pass over to you again, Massimo. Again, great. Thank you very much. And uh, <clears throat> just want to tell you a uh, few things. Uh, okay, also Dominic has written a nice post on ITTF regarding uh, sports psychology, relaxation and uh, other stuff that uh, really interesting. I, I would recommend you to, to read it. And uh, you see how many things are, uh, you know, uh, um, going together when uh, we have to think about uh, about the uh, about the players. So after this uh, this part, uh, I will go uh, quite uh, um, fast, but not that fast anyway. <laughs> so with the strategy and tactics. So I, uh, yeah, um, for me they're not the same actually because. Uh, um, the strategy for me is uh, something that you define a certain, uh, how to say, uh, elements during the rally and the tactics is how to use your strokes, actually. So, for example, I want to play, I don't know, a few balls to the forehands in order to uh, change to the backhand, try to make the opponents losing the balance and so on. Or I can use... Uh, no, or and I, I can use uh, uh, my my spin, more spin, less spin, more side spin, uh, more uh, fake action, and so on. That we again we will see next time. But this is just to give you a very uh, simple uh, uh, taste uh, on the on this. So um, I have given a few things to remember: body strokes, placement, understand your and opponent's game. Uh, for me, the tactical elements uh, are these few that you can see. Uh, your skills, opponent skills, serve, serve, uh, receive, opening, block, counterattack, and I added the defense. Look, I have, uh, I have identified this uh, uh, particular moment of the tactics uh, um, uh, matching with, the, with what happened in the match. So we have to we have to serve. We have to start serving. So we have to go for the second ball, third ball, fourth ball, and fifth ball. So I connected all of them. I th I hope you will like it. <laughs> so your skills is very important. We said very much before how important it is to understand your skill, to cultivate them, to explore more skills, and uh, uh, apply them uh, properly. The uh, opponent skills, this is something that maybe maybe we don't consider much, but uh, the more we play with our opponents, uh, the easier will be to play with them because we give for granted some, uh, some skills that normally, you know, we have to think about. But, uh, but when we play with the player, like, uh, I, you know, I give you a very simple example. If I have to play with the Arimoto, I know that he's a return. <laughs> He's a flick anyway. So uh, just this uh, to give you the uh, the idea. But many other things. Players tend to step around uh, immediately with the first ball, going with the right leg in front, uh, or uh, many interactions are there. So learning uh, and observing the opponent's skills is very, very good, especially for you uh, coaches, uh, how to predict uh, 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 certain uh, certain uh, moves from the from the opponents and uh, give a proper advice to to your uh, to your kids. Uh, uh, the serve I call it the first ball. Of course, uh, is uh, is the is the is the way that you set up your your game. Uh, what to do with the serve? Um, remember what was good. You win the point, uh, the previous set, you win the point 9-9, nine, nine, uh, you win the point because the opponent's push or whatever he did, remember it. So try to use uh, very good memories, you know, in order to remember what was good and what was not good. Uh, of course, uh, consider what kind of spin, consider uh, where to place the ball uh, according to the opponent. So the tactical, the tactic is something really, every time you have to consider your skills, opponent skills. And to make it short, the best tactics is to use your best skills against the weakness of your opponents. That is the best. So if an opponent is not able to block, I will insist on in making spin and spin and spin because he's in trouble to do that. 
so I can exploit my my skills and uh, and uh, so I can be successful. Uh, the second ball is serve and receive. Second ball is a serve receive. We we have to understand what to do. Read fast, act fast. Uh, anticipation skills. Uh, uh, reading what the, the spin is uh, the other side uh, again uh, remember past experience what is the best return to play uh, this is a part that you have to observe your players and see what is the results they do well they don't do well so we try to guide them properly uh, for the for the for the next time uh, the third ball i call opening so normally after the serve, let's say that uh, most of the players tend to, to, to open with the flick, uh, with the top spin, uh, whatever. It can be a good opportunity, I try to finish and so on. So this, uh, this kind of kids, uh, now it's time to, to, you know, to define. I'm not, uh, I'm not against with those that uh, I do the serve, uh, uh, the opponent's push and maybe I push because my nature, my skill is to play more control. Maybe I have a great block and I'm, I'm not scared if the, the opponents attack that ball. So I'm going straight to push, giving chance to attack and I'm ready to block uh, confidently or even to counterattack. So this uh, should I stay or should I go that was a song of uh, the clash. Uh, early 80s is uh, what to do in the in the, in the in the third ball, you know. So uh, uh, this is uh, something that we have uh, we have to think. So I want that you start thinking how much mental is uh, this game. Yeah, we don't need to explain this to the kids, but we have to know. I know that you give for granted, but not only when you see the top players and you see that they are 3-3, three, 10-10, three, ten, ten. Oh, it's a very mental game. It's not really like that. It's a mental game from day one, I would say, since uh, they, they start uh, the, the, this uh, discipline. I put the block as a fourth ball because many, many tends to risk too much for my point of view. Kids are doing this. So block is the way to control, to have a, you know, to, let's say, to, to use the opponent's speed and spin. And then uh, I, I can use my good timing, the angle, uh, as it is written, then you will, you will read late, later on uh, when uh, Dominic will explain better regarding this lesson and uh, how to improve. Of course, uh, many times the racket is not uh, strong, firm enough, so the grip is important. Uh, placement, uh, uh, kids, they forget to place the ball, but it's super important to place the ball, changing, vary the block. Uh, spin block, passive block, uh, many blocks are there. We need one class actually only for the block one day. So maybe we can uh, we can discuss this uh, um, uh, furthermore in the in the in the future. The fifth ball is the attack. So after I did the serve, uh, maybe I open with the flick or a top spin, and I am ready for uh, the fifth ball. Since since the the majority of the rallies uh, finishing within five six balls, so then we have to think about. So it's, it's not that the rallies are keep going for uh, uh, fifteen minutes. It goes for one and a half seconds, sometimes two seconds, three seconds if we really exaggerate. So we have to compress our uh, tactical. Uh, let's say, uh, planning in order to get the most from, uh, from this. Otherwise, just in case, uh, we have the defense. So can be the sixth wall. We are not ready. And what to do? I'm not talking, yes, it is the, the, the pure defense, uh, like defensive, the traditional defending. But it's more an attitude, you know, to to control, maybe going back, uh, fishing or uh, lobbing. And this is uh, maybe you have done one week attacking all the time, you know, and doing the proper stuff in the training. Then you go in the in the match and you change your uh, your your nature because in that moment uh, you you don't have that that ability. That's why I told you, you know, how to handle the 
the, the, the pressure and the moment of the of the game. Yes, all related with the, with the defense, of course, is the, is the increase in decrease in speed, attack implementation. You can control and try to counterattack and so on. So the last uh, last uh, um, uh, slide, uh, I want to just to give you the uh, not the idea. I like database of my 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 competitions. So uh, I, I just put this simple example, you know, with the name of opponents, myself, uh, that were in Tokyo uh, during the Olympic Games in the final, and uh, you win 4-3. Uh, so I'm a silver medalist, unfortunately. You are a gold medalist. And uh, with this uh, gold medal, uh, I finish this part, uh, I return uh, back to Dominic, and uh, thank you for now, uh, we'll talk later again. Thank you very much, Massimo, and uh, now it is time for the question and answer part. And uh, as I've seen so far, uh, one, one question has arose so far, it is from Oscar. He asked if it's uh, better to 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 take the yo-yo test instead of the Cooper test for the aerobic endurance. So, uh, what uh, Oscar, what we wanted to tell you, uh, or what we wanted to show you with our working chart, is was just an example. So the the test should be reasonable uh, related to the age. Uh, also think about the time it takes. You know the equipment you need, etc. There are many things. And also keep in mind that at the end you have to evaluate the results. So it also depends a lot on, on the amount of athletes you do have in your group. So I hope this was a, that this answer helped you a little bit more. So it was just an example, you know. Uh, you, you can be very open-minded and, and creative with the tests, I would say. So Thanks. yes, uh, 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 Dominic, so just, uh, just to add one, uh, uh, yeah, what, uh, what we have put in that, uh, in that chart, uh, is uh, is something that also you can confront uh, online. There is a lot of a lot of literature on the, on this, and then you can have the all the values, uh, the chart according to the gender, according to the uh, to the, the the height of the athletes, and so on, and age, and so on. So it is uh, it is better to refer every time whatever the test you want to conduct. Uh, that just to have uh, some, uh, you know, uh, mm, uh, related results in order to compare and see, okay, I'm excellent, average, poor, and so on. Thank you very much, Massimo, for the additional speech. And uh, I would like uh, to, to thank you, Massimo. Uh, you are our ITTF High Performance Elite Coach. And you shared with us uh, your great knowledge and the ideas uh, regarding how to increase the, the level of a talented hopes player with the focus on a clear and well-conceived pathway. So, grazie mille, Massimo. Grazie. Vielen Dank. <laughs> and I also would like to thank all of you for your interest and attendance. And I'm looking forward to our next lesson, and uh, it will be next Friday at uh, 3 p.m. Uh, Central European Summertime. And the topic will be, as mentioned before, nationals. So stay tuned. And that's all from my side for today. And uh, pass over to you, Max, and I kindly ask you for the closing words. Yeah, thank you, Dominic. I hope you enjoyed our uh, time uh, here, uh, try to give you uh, the best knowledge I would call the rendezvous with the knowledge and uh, and uh, we are preparing the next class for the for the uh, for uh, this coming Friday and um, I wish you all the best uh, and uh, see you next week thank you very much Dominic ciao bye bye stay healthy stay safe ciao ciao bye bye all the best <laughs>